Hey you guys, it's Steph and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. So in today's video, we are gonna be testing out quite possibly the most hyped up brush brand that ever was. Of course, I am talking about Morphe brushes. I picked up this set the other day. This is their Babe Faves. And I also have a few little other ones as well that I got sent in PR like a few months ago now that I have not touched. So I've got those as well. So if you're new here then, Hi, hello, this is a handshake, how you doing? Basically, whenever I test out brushes, I pretty much tend to do just like an everyday makeup look using products that I use all the time or on the reg, products that I kind of know how they perform. But I do it with brand new brushes and I let you guys know my thoughts. So without further ado, it's time to put the cat ears on, get my hair out of the way, and let's get into the video. It's actually half one in the morning while I'm filming this. Yep. So like I said, I do have the Babe Faves collection, which has, I believe, 10 different brushes. Yeah, 10 of their best-selling face tools. So this is what it looks like on the back. As you can see, you've got a sponge there. You've got three eye brushes, I think. Yeah, I think three eye brushes. And then you've got, doing a little bit of mask there, six face brushes. So I picked that up. And then, like I said, I also have these brushes here. So we've got the M536. Is that in this one? Looks kind of like a highlighty sort of under eye setting brush, which looks pretty nice. I tend to use this sort of brush quite often. Um, and then I have basically like a flat shader brush and I also have a fluffy brush. So the fluffy one is the M441 and the flat shader is the M433, which I don't think are actually included in this box. So that actually worked out pretty good. All right, let's open this bad boy up. I think it cost me this set. I think it was around 50 pounds somewhere somewhere around there. So let's have a little look. Okay. So that is what the sponge looks like. I feel like I've heard quite a lot about the sponge. So this is what the sponge looks like and it actually feels very, very soft. I've got a brand new beauty blender here so you can see it like in terms of size comparison and everything like that. The Morphe one is a bit bigger. The Morphe one seems a little bit more dense. It also seems softer and kind of like, I don't know, the beauty blender seems to squish more because it almost feels like it's got more air bubbles in it, whereas this one's a little bit more dense, but they both feel the same in terms of squishiness, if that's the thing. If, it, if there was like a squishiness meter, then they both kind of appear on the same level. I, I need to figure out a better way to describe things. Now I'm just sitting here just squeezing these things over and over again. Okay, I'm gonna put them down. And then we have the other nine brushes. So like I said, we've got a little mixture of everything. This looks like a very nice, little highlighter brush. Hello, how are you doing? That's the M501. I'm gonna try and use as many brushes as I physically can throughout this video. So I'm not really gonna go through all of them. I think we should just get started. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is use the sponge on one side and the brush on the other side just to kind of see how they both apply the foundation. So what I'm gonna do is quickly go off camera and wet this guy. So off I go. Off I go. Okay, so let's do another little size comparison. So this is a dry beauty blender. Obviously the Morphe one was a little bit bigger than this to start off with. Now, he's all grown up. He's massive. That's what she said. I swear I say that in every video. Feels very, very soft. I actually feel like I kind of prefer how this feels to the Beauty Blender at the moment, but we still need to see how this actually applies my foundation. So let's just go straight in with that. So what I'm gonna be using is the Too Faced Born This Way, which is like, I know it, I use it all the time. Um, let's just take some of this. This might not, match me today because my tan is starting to fade, but we shall see. I'm just gonna blend that all over like I would normally, just with like any other regular sponge that I would use. Seems to be applying it really nicely, having no issues with that whatsoever. Just going for a little closer look. Yeah, that's looking really good so far. It's not looking like patchy, it's just going on really, really evenly. I don't really have anything to say about it because I'm not having any issues, it's just like, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of a beauty blender or for example, one of the Real Technique sponges. It's something that I'm not really having any issues with. So that's a good start. Hasn't really soaked up too much product either. Um, feels like nice on my skin. It doesn't feel hard or solid or anything like that. Sometimes you can get sponges that just like sound like you're just bouncing ping pong balls off your face. Whereas this is just like nice and soft. So yeah, so far that is a win as you can see has sort of added the usual coverage that this foundation would. So I like that. Next up, we'll move on to a foundation brush. So this is the M439. Let me just read what it says on the back of the box. This is the Deluxe Buffer. 
Now, one thing I've always been very skeptical about with Morphe brushes is I've heard that they shed a lot. So I'm going to be like keeping a close eye out for this because that's like the main thing I've heard as like any drama going around about them. I either hear really good things or I hear that they're like, they just shed like a bitch. So, so I'm going to keep a close eye on these brushes to see if they do shed at all. I'm literally like pulling at this right now. And this one is absolutely nothing. So that's a good start. So I'm just going to apply. Let's do like one and a half pumps of that onto this brush. I'm actually quite excited about this. They feel very, very soft by the way. I didn't even mention how they actually felt, but like the quality of the brushes themselves feel really decent. They kind of feel like my Zoeva ones. Um, and the bristles, yeah, the bristles actually feel similar to Zoeva as well. Okay, we're gonna need more foundation than that. Has applied it really nicely though. I feel like it's just maybe soaked up some of the product a little bit. But then again, sponges do tend to apply a bit more coverage usually. That's a good size brush though. That's like doing my entire face pretty quickly. Okay, how are we doing? Any little loose hairs? Nope, nothing. Yeah, just applying everything fine. I'm having no issues with that at all, to be honest. And I kind of like how it's slightly domed. I have a Zoeva one like this, but it's a little bit smaller. So I like that this is like the same sort of size as my usual buffing brush, but it's kind of sloped down at the sides. It just means that you can kind of get into the little corners a little bit better. I think I prefer how the sponge applies everything, but that's probably because it applies a little bit more coverage. But I do still really like how it looks on this side. It's just not as much coverage, but that usually tends to be the way with brushes anyway. But yeah, I'm much more into this guy. I'm gonna apply it a little bit more with the sponge, I think, because I'm really into that. You can see it just adds way more coverage. Yeah, I like both of those. I think I do prefer the sponge, but for like ease of use for something that I don't have to wear, I do also really like the brush. So next up, you guys know I never normally use this sort of brush for concealer, but I'm pretty sure this is some sort of concealer brush. It says on the back of the box that it's an oval camouflage. I feel like this would be quite good for cutting the crease though. So this one here is the M224. Let's have a little look. No, nothing coming off there, so that's good. Again, feels pretty decent quality. So I think what I might do is do like a little experiment with myself. You guys know I normally just use Bye Bye Under Eye with my fingers, but I'm gonna see how it applies with this brush. Pop a little bit of that on the back of my hand. And yeah, let's see how it applies with this brush. Yeah, this brush would be really good for doing a cut crease. I can just see it now. Pat that like all over my lid as well, maybe. How are we doing? Okay, it's actually packed it on really nicely. There's no real like harsh lines or anything. Cause that's the thing I tend to find when applying Bye Bye Under Eye with a brush is it's usually quite hard to like blend out seamlessly because it is so thick. You almost wanna pat it in with your fingers and mesh it to your foundation. And I find with brushes, it's usually quite difficult to do that with. But that is actually working really well. I mean, you can see just how bright my under eyes look right now. Um, I mean, I probably will continue to just use it with my fingers because it's easy. These fingers are always there. Um, but I am very, very interested in how this brush will work for a cut crease because it just seems to be sitting like in my crease really nicely. Yeah, let's do a little bit more of that. I'm gonna add a little bit of concealer around my nose, still using Bye Bye Under Eye. I'm just putting it wherever I want right now. Just add a little bit more coverage where I need it. And then, yeah, I'm actually gonna do the same on this side. I didn't think I was gonna like that for concealer, to be honest. I thought, I mean, I can always usually find a use for most brushes, but I, I never like brushes with Bye Bye Under Eye. And this one actually, seems to be working really well. It's probably one of the better brushes I've used for Bye Bye Under Eye. Just kind of, I don't know, just kind of blends it out easily. You just use like tapping motions like I would with my finger, but I'm obviously not getting my finger dirty, which is a plus. Just pat that on my lid. You guys hear screaming every so often. Don't worry, nothing to be alarmed about. Ollie's just playing Fortnite right above my head right now. So if you hear screaming every so often, don't worry, it's just Ollie. Yeah, I have no issues with that whatsoever, and I never use brushes like this, so I'm actually very, very impressed with that one. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and powder everything down, so I'm just gonna use my usual Laura Mercier powder. So the brushes that I'm gonna use, I have this one here, which is the E3 brush, which, again, feels very soft. Um, oh, we got, we got one little stray. Any more? Any more coming out to play? 
No, it's just like a rogue hair then. Okay, that ain't too bad. So I'm probably gonna use this for like the majority of my face. And then for my under eyes, I have the M536, which again, feels pretty good. I also actually have this one, which is the tapered powder. Let's have a little look at this guy. Why is he packaged up so differently? What makes you so special, huh? Okay, that looks like it could be good for like contour or something like that. Maybe applying a little bit of bronzer. Um, interesting, I don't really have many brushes that look like this. It's kind of like, kind of fluffy, but also kind of flat. Interesting. It's probably not that interesting, let's face it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go in with the M536. I feel like a real like beauty guru talking in Morphe. Like, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm using all the Morphe codes and it's making me feel legit. So I'm just gonna go under my eyes with that first, make sure there was no creasing or anything. I didn't really seem to pick up much powder. Let me try that again. Okay, let's try that now. It's better. Like didn't seem to wanna pick up powder first. Oh, perfect. No issues with that whatsoever. I'm gonna go over my lids and just set all of that as well. Easy peasy. And then do the usual kind of like around my nose. That's where I tend to pack in a little bit more powder. Um, a little bit on my small lines. And then just wherever I've kind of put concealer, I usually tend to put a little bit more powder just to make sure that it doesn't shift throughout the day. And then whatever's left on my brush, I'm just gonna go right in the center of my forehead. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Looks very similar to how like my other brushes would work. For example, one I have here is the Sigma, this is a recent discovery actually, the Sigma F37. As you can see, it's a lot bigger, a lot fluffier, but I've really been enjoying that. And then I also have this one from Tarte, which I've been liking, which I guess looks fairly similar to that one there. It's a little bit more pointed, but they all seem to kind of work the same. So yeah, I'm liking how that looks so far. So now you guys know I don't usually bake, but should probably try this out just to see how it works. Um, yeah, I'm gonna bake using like the flat edge. So let's pick that up there. I never do this. I never usually like the outcome, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I like to start right from the outer corner. I'm just kind of bring that in. Might even try and bake my nose a little bit. Make it look snatched, as the kids would say. Getting down with the kids. Let's try that actually. Got a nice little sharp edge, so that looks cool. That looks cool. Who the hell am I? Do a little bit more under my eyes. God, I hate baking so much. Let me know, do you guys still bake? I've like never really gotten on board with it. I can't really get on board with it. It just makes me feel like I've got concrete like setting on my face. Literally like the most baking I do is just pressing powder into my face with a sponge. That's like my idea of baking. Okay, that nose contouring situation looks awful, but that's fine, it's absolutely fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and brush all of that off with the E3. E3, I'm learning here guys, I'm learning. Brush all of that off. Oh, I, I just hate it. It's worked, it has worked fine, I just hate it for my under eyes. Just makes everything look so cakey and dry. I feel like that's done something to my nose that I'm not actually mad at. Um, yeah, I don't mind baking for the rest of my face. It's literally just flat under my eyes. It's just, it's too dry, it's too matte. So now, just while I've got this brush in my hand, I'm gonna take whatever is left in the lids of my powder there, and just kind of pat that over the rest of my face. I feel like this brush would also be quite good for um, bronzing up. Like, it looks, that's what it bloody looks like. I don't know where it is. Like, it looks like my bloody backstage brush that I use all the time. So this one's a little bit more tapered and a little bit bigger, but you can see like they're not far off. So maybe I will get quite a lot of use out of this. Cause you guys know I'm always using that bloody backstage brush. Okay, let's set the rest of my face. I haven't even set that bloody eyelid yet. What am I doing? Let's fix that. There we go, that's better. Again, that's looking pretty good. I'm having no issues with that whatsoever. It's applied everything really nicely actually. So I'm Something, is that cat hair in my eyelash? Whatever. I'm so over cat hairs now. I literally just like find them. I find them places where you probably shouldn't find cat hair. Let me know if you're like a cat mum or dad and you can relate. Yeah, you know, these are just applying everything really, really easily, having no issues whatsoever. But I mean, we've just gone ahead and applied like one color to my face. So now, 
Now it's time to sculpt the space out a little bit, so let's move on to contour. All right, so for contour today, I'm actually gonna use something that I've actually been using quite a lot since my recent testing video, which is a Morphe palette. This video isn't sponsored, I promise. Um, but this is the, uh, what was it? The Lo-Fi 8L Highlight and Contour Palette. Really been liking these two shades down here, so I'm gonna give those a go. So the first brush I have here is called the M438, which looking at my little, my little box over here, apparently this is the pointed contour. To me, this looks more like a highlighter brush. I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit too sharp for a contour. Um, I also have one of these brushes, which you guys know I always tend to use for contour and bronzer. This is the E4. So this definitely looks like something I would use. Then obviously we have this fluffy brush that looks a lot like the um, blank canvas one that I'm probably gonna use for bronzer. And then I have this little guy here, which is the M523, which again, looks like something I'd probably use for a little bit of bronzer, a little bit of contour when I'm trying to like do both when I'm in a rush or something. So I think what I'm gonna start off with is an old favorite, just like a slanted um, contouring brush. This, like I said, is the E4. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Donuts. Tap a little bit on there and just apply that to my cheeks. It seems a little bit more dense than my usual like angled brushes. Seems to be working fine though, having no issues with that at all. Just kind of like scooping my cheek like so. Yeah, that's looking good. That's actually looking really, really good. I'm gonna try this, but I don't have high hopes because I don't know, to me it just looked a little bit too precise. But let's see what it can do. I don't like this. The brush feels fine, but it's just, I would not use this for contour. I don't know about you guys, but like, would you use this for contour? For me, I'm just like, I feel like I'm literally just like drawing a stripe on my face. Yeah, not a fan of that for contour. I'd probably use this for like setting under my eyes or I don't know, maybe like contouring around my jaw or something where I want something a little bit more harsh. But for my face, no, no, no. Stick to something like this. I'm also just gonna quickly try this guy here, the M532. And let's try and like even, oh God. Bloody hell, what have I done there? Let's try and even that up a little bit. I'm just gonna bring that kind of like around my forehead. I mean, this is working absolutely fine. It's just not, it's just not the sort of brush I would normally use for this kind of thing. I'd maybe use this for blusher or if I was kind of like doing a really rough kind of bronzing contouring situation. But for contour, I usually wanna be a little bit more precise. Maybe if it works like around my forehead, for example. Yeah, it seems to work for around my forehead. But normally like, normally I just use the same brush. I find that the kind of like angled brushes work for pretty much everything you wanna do. So I'm gonna stick to that guy, I think. Definitely think I prefer this one. Probably should be darkening my foundation up too much right now because I'm fully aware that my body does not match my face. And just kind of scoop it under so it looks a little bit straighter almost. So I'd probably do that with something like this maybe. But in reality, this to me is like a highlighter brush or it's an under eye setting brush. Or maybe a nose contour brush. Let's try it for nose contour, because it is quite fluffy. And I don't like to be too precise with my nose because I can't do it. Let's not pretend I do it for any other reason other than the fact that I just can't contour my nose. Eh, close enough. Yeah, this is my jam. This guy is definitely the best one for contouring for me. Okay, so now, just because I do want to be fair, I'm gonna put down that Morphe palette and I'm gonna use something that I always, always used to use that I actually refound a couple of weeks ago now. It is the Urban Decay Beach Bronzer. Love this stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap the um, E3 brush in there and just kind of bronze up my cheeks ever so slightly. I like this sort of brush because it just means I can be ever so slightly precise because obviously it does have like a slightly pointed tip. So I can put the majority of the product on there and then just kind of buff it out quite lazily. It's quite a good kind of lazy everything brush. It's also one of those brushes that if I was going away and I could only take like a few brushes with me, I would 100% take something like this because again, I can pretty much powder down my entire face with it, just give it a little scrub and you can do bronzer, you can do contour, you can do blusher. You could probably even ever so slightly do highlighter if you just kind of like flatten it and go along your cheekbones like that. Um, but yeah, big, big fan of that brush. It does remind me a lot of my blank canvas ones, so I'm actually very, very impressed by this. While I'm here, I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and add a tiny little bit of blush as well. This one's just from Essence. I'm gonna use the 532 brush again. And just kind of apply a little bit of that onto the apples of my cheeks. 
Yeah, that works quite well. It's quite a subtle blush, so it's not gonna do anything mad. Yep, that works fine. Again, probably would just go in with this guy. Just, you know, old habits die hard sort of thing. Yeah, nice enough. All right, so now my friends, now it's time to move on to highlighter, which I actually have like four potential brushes for. So we've got a fan brush. We have this guy, which is the M510, which I think is like an eye, it's like a, called a round blender. But to me, this looks very, very similar to my Zoeva Luxe Powder Fusion. We also then have this one here, which is the M501, which is the Pro Pointed Blender. So again, looks very, very similar. Just looks like, yeah, it just looks pretty damn similar to be honest. And then we have this guy, the contouring, contouring brush that to me just looks like a big fat highlighting brush. So I think I'm gonna try and use as many of these as possible. I mean, do I ever need an excuse to apply more highlighter? The answer is no. So let's try these out. I think I'm gonna go for this bad boy first. So for highlighter, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this Kylie one. Again, I haven't used pretty much since my Kylie testing video. I had like a little rearrange of my makeup recently and I found loads of products that I was like, I actually loved that when I tried it, so I need to use that more. So this one is in the shade Santorini. I'm just gonna swirl my brush around the lid because it is a loose highlighter. Try not to pick up too much. Literally doesn't even look like I've got anything on the brush right now. And let's see how this works. Well. It definitely works. Hell yeah. I feel like I could even go a little bit bigger with this brush. Maybe. Actually, maybe not. Maybe it's actually, maybe I'm just being ridiculous. Oh, this highlighter is so freaking good. Yeah, that works really well. That's like not too kind of all over the place. It's a little bit more concentrated than my um, Zoeva brush that I use. This, by the way, is the M510. Yeah, that worked really well. That. That actually worked really well. It's like nice and precise, but still nicely blended. This would also work really well in the crease, which I think is what they generally want you to use this for. You know, just like pop it in the crease to do like a really blown out transition color. But it also works as a pretty banging highlighter brush as well. So fan of that. I'm now gonna go ahead and use the fan brush. So this is called the M310. I don't normally use fan brushes. They're not my favorite way to apply highlighter, but I can get down with it. So let's do it on this side. It's actually quite a big fan brush. Oh yeah, that's working pretty damn well. It's nice and soft. It's quite dense as well. Like I find a lot of fan brushes, if I have one here, this one, I can't remember who this is from. This is from Lorox, so it's quite a cheap brand anyway, but I find generally a lot of fan brushes seem to be quite thin. This is just an example. I don't really, to be honest, I don't really like this brush all that much, but it's quite like a, I don't know, I find fan brushes tend to be quite thin, whereas this one, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it's a lot, it's a lot more dense. So I quite like that about it. Yeah, it just seems to apply everything really, really nicely. It's not, it's not too heavy. It kind of thins out on the end as well, which I quite like. So it means you're not applying like a big chunk of highlighter, which is good. It does seem to blend out really quite easily. There's no like harsh lines or anything like that, which is what I tend to find with a lot of fan brushes, usually because obviously they are just essentially a straight line. I find they can sometimes just make it look like I have just got like a stripe of highlighter, whereas this one seems to just, I don't know, doesn't look like, I mean, it does obviously look like a freaking massive stripe of highlighter because this stuff is insane, but you can see it doesn't, doesn't look like a big stripe. It just kind of blends out quite nicely. So yeah, I like that too. My God, my highlighter is so popping right now. All right, so now I'm just gonna quickly dust off this guy. So this is the contouring brush we used a second ago but I don't think so. I do not think so. So I'm gonna take some of that. And again, just put it in the lids because this stuff is potent. And yeah, to me, this is just a highlighting brush. Even just like around here, if I kind of go over the top of what I just did. Yeah, that just fits really nicely on my cheek. Yeah, this is definitely more of a highlighting brush for me. I get it if you're maybe one of those people that like a slightly more intense contour, but for me, this is 100% a highlighting brush. Do a little bit on my lippies. Oh my God, hell yeah. All right, so now last but not least, I'm gonna go in with the M501. Again, just take a little bit in the lid, swirl my brush around and just pop that above my brow. That actually seemed to apply the highlighter even better. This brush seems a little bit less soft, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's still very, very soft, 
but it just seems to be kind of, I don't know, applying the highlighter a little bit more densely. But yeah, that looks, that looks good. I mean, the highlighter looks frigging great no matter what I do with it, but, but those brushes have applied everything really, really nicely. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I've now got four new highlighting brushes, so thumbs up. I wonder if I can, uh, uh. Whee! And then again, just as I always do, I'm just gonna quickly go back over with my bronzer brush just to kind of blend all of those edges in. Nice and easy. Okay, friends, so now I'm gonna move on to the eye portion of this video. Just gonna go ahead and use my Tarte Man Eater palette, which is probably like one of my favorite kind of everyday palettes. It smells so good. Okay, so these are the five eye brushes we have to work with at the moment. We've obviously got the camouflage brush. We then have the two brushes that I freaking love for highlighter. And then I've got these two brushes here. We have the M441, which is kind of like just a standard fluffy brush. And then we have the M433, which is just like a kind of flat, fluffy shader. What the hell do they even describe this as? M for, I don't know. So I think what I'm gonna do is first of all take this guy here, the round pointed blender or whatever the hell it's called. Just gonna dust off any excess highlighter that is on there. And I'm gonna go in, a little bit nervous about this because this is, a, this is a much bigger than I'm used to. Again, that's, that, that's what she said. That's what she said. But this is like my usual kind of fluffy brush that I tend to go in with. So this is quite a bit bigger. Uh, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go in with purr and just kind of put that right on the tip and just blend that in. If this works, this could like revolutionize my crease blending. Because this in theory should just be able to blend everything out really, really quickly. And that theory has proven to be correct. That's actually blending out really, really easily and really quickly. Why did I never think to use a brush that big for my crease. It would just save me so much time. This works very well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the slightly smaller fluffy brush and I'm just gonna go in with the shade Saucy, which is probably one of my favorite shades from this palette. And I'm gonna work that more precisely into the crease. Okay, that was really bloody quick. Am I even using the right brush here? I feel like I picked up the wrong, did I pick up the wrong brush? No, I didn't. It's not like a perfectly round, fluffy brush, unless it's just been like squished that way. But, eh, maybe it is perfectly round. I think it has just been kind of squished that way. Oh, hello, pigmentation. Wasn't expecting to go that intense on my eyes today, but okay, that's fine. Again, yeah, that's blended everything out really, really easily. Um, I feel like, I feel, like this, I feel like this video is really boring because everything's, this is just kind of like an everyday makeup tutorial because genuinely, like the majority of these brushes seem to be working really, really well. That's blended out absolutely fine. I've got zero issues with that. Huh, okay. So now I'm gonna take the sort of flat shader brush, which is called the M433, and I'm gonna run that on my lower lash line, I think, just using the same shade that I used before, which was Saucy. Ooh, that works really well. Hello, lower lash line, how you doing? Yep, that did fine. So now what I'd normally use a brush like this for, we've got a couple of little strays there. You know, they're still attached, they're just, they're just rogue, but and they're pointing out this direction. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go in with this shade here, the Midnight Shade, and I'm gonna just pack that on my outer corner and just kind of buff that ever so slightly more into my crease as well. I get such ball sacky eyelids as I'm getting older. They just look like, just like ball sacks, that. Nice. So now I'm gonna take that camouflage brush again. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my Bye Bye Under Eye. And I'm gonna see how this works for doing a little cut crease. Okay, I need a little bit more than that. I'm being super stingy with that today. Yeah, so I'm just gonna load up my brush a little bit with that concealer and let's see how we do. I'm just doing like an everyday kind of look, but I wanna see how this works. Oh yeah, that's not working too bad. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite thing for a cut crease, but it's definitely probably one of the brushes that I'll reach for more than others. I've got one that's like a super, super cheap brush from Primark, I think it is. It's like a really, really crappy brush, but it works so well for cut creases. This, I don't know if you can see, but it does have like slight ridges to it when it's like got product in it, which is fine. Um, so you, but, but it just means you may wanna be a little bit more careful. It's not like the most precise thing for a cut crease. Um, but it works fine, I'm having like no issues with it at all. I'm just gonna kind of tap that on, like so. Then I'm just gonna dust off that little flat brush. 
And you know what, I'm actually gonna go in and then I'm just gonna dust off whatever is on that flat brush that I used earlier on. And I'm gonna go in with the shade Foxy, I think. That's picked up a lot of product there, which is good. And I'm gonna tap that all over my lid. This brush kind of smells a little bit funny, you know? It smells like, we have this place in Cornwall and it's called Flambards. Let me know if you've ever been. And it's got this place, it's like an old Victorian village. And it just smells kind of like that. It's really kind of weird. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of like blend that onto my lid and then take a little bit of lace, which is a slightly lighter kind of highlighting shade and just pack that on the inner corner. Yeah, it's just like a little, little kind of like super, super subtle cut crease. It's like pretty much non-existent. Um, but yeah, it does work. Good to know. I do want to kind of highlight my inner corner a little bit more though. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of that Kylie highlighter and pop that right on the inner corner. There she is. There she freaking is. There she freaking is. Yeah, there we go. Holla. I don't think I've ever said that in my life. I don't know why I said that. So I'm also going to do a little bit on my brow bone and by a little, apparently I mean a lot. Nothing new here. That's so nice. Yeah, I'm just gonna bring that ever so slightly in my inner corner as well. Really kind of like highlight that little shitty cut crease. Okay, that's that's worked fine. No issues here. It is where it is. It's a pretty kind of basic eye look, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So now just to save some time because I feel like this video has already gone on pretty long, I'm gonna go ahead, go off camera, do my other eye, do my brows, do my lashes. I'm actually gonna be testing out a new mascara in a second and do my lips, and I think that's it. All right guys, so this is the finished look, and I've gotta say, I'm actually very, very impressed with how this look turned out. Like, it's just like my everyday kind of makeup look, but the brushes applied everything just how all of my other brushes would. Like, I've always kind of had this little thing with Morphe brushes where I've been like, everyone shields them online, and everyone uses their code, which, you know, do what you gotta do, make your money, but I've always been a little bit like, are they actually worth the hype? Are they actually kind of decent? But I'm actually very impressed. Um, there's been no shedding. There's There's been no issues at all. And I feel like I've actually found a lot of kind of like everyday staple brushes that I'm probably gonna use on the reg. Like this one, for example, um, the little kind of like highlighter brushes or whatever this is called, like the blending brush or whatever that I like to use as a highlighter brush. Love those. The eyeshadow brushes are really nice. This kind of like angled brush, I'm gonna be using a lot. This sponge as well, I really, really liked. Love how kind of like squishy it is. I don't know, I just liked it. It was handy for just like baking and everything as well. So really big fan of that. The foundation brush was nice. The fan brush was nice. Overall, I'm actually pretty damn impressed. So guys, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What are your experiences with Morphe? Have you ever tried Morphe brushes? Which are your faves? If you enjoyed this video, as always, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to see more of me because I upload all the damn time. Also, let me know what other brushes you guys want me to try out, if there's any specific brands or whatever, because I can definitely get around to doing that. But apart from that, that is it from me. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.